everyone, welcome to the channel. This is Ron Guth and today we're going to do a very interesting test to see how good Google Images is at finding your particular coin using just pictures. Now Google Images is a very powerful tool just like the Google text searches are. You basically plug in a picture and the Google searches the vast interweb to see if they can find a match. What we're going to do today is test about maybe 10 or 11 coins and see exactly how well they do. Identifying coins is of particular importance when you're dealing with world coins because there are a lot of coins that have uh, odd legends, odd languages. If you're not familiar with a language, you may not even be able to, able to identify the country of the coin without the help of some outside resource like Google Images. And the other thing about uh, using Google Images to identify coins is you don't ever want to sell a coin before you know exactly what it is or you don't want to buy a coin before you know exactly what it is because you could spend too much money or you could sell a coin too cheaply. So always make sure you research your coins before you sell them. To get to Google Images you do a search. It can be on Google. I do use DuckDuckGo. Search for Google Images and you get this group of stuff here, Google Images, and what you can do is once you get there you can bookmark the URL address for future reference. Now this really doesn't look very helpful and, and it's not. There are no instructions here about what to do, but this is really where all everything takes place. If you see this little camera icon here, it says search by image, and if you click on that it asks you to either drag an image here or upload a file. What we're going to do is we're going to upload some files and I have some already established here. So these are coins that I selected. Uh, I, I know what all of these are now. I didn't know what this one was here at the bottom, but these are all in a weird language or this uh, has very little information on it. So if you're not familiar with it, it's either going to take you an extremely long time to find it or hopefully Google Images will help you out. So in the first case here, we have a porcelain coin from Germany. It's 62 millimeters in width, which is about three and a half inches or thereabouts. So it's a pretty big coin, all written in German. If you're not familiar with German, you'll have a hard time translating what the coin is. So if we double click on that, Google starts to upload it and they immediately look for it. And they apparently have some sort of algorithm where they identify sections of the coin that they use to do their match. Here's like a, a, a double segment here. But anyway, first coin they come up with is a large 62 millimeter German white porcelain coin. And this is lucky us. This is exactly what we're looking for. This site tells us that it is a uh, 1925 dated coin that commemorates the 700th anniversary of the founding of the city of Oppenheim. Right up here, Oppenheim am Rhein. That's a German city. So this tells us, first of all, what it is, and it gives us a little bit of pricing information because we can see that it sold for $40. So let's go back to Google Images and look at another coin. So far we're batting 100%. Pull up another image. This is of a Netherlands, what they call it a rider, because here's a guy on a horse. And let's see if they can find that. Now this one is dated 1791. There's the date right there. And this image, by the way, is uh, a TrueView image from PCGS of a coin that I once owned. There, there it actually is. There's a coin on my website, GermanCoins.com. But if we skip that one, since that's sort of cheating, let's go here to NGCCoin.com. Uh, NGC, of course, is the grading service uh, from Florida, Numismatic Guarantee Service. And they identify the coin as a Netherlands Utrecht. That's one of the uh, city-states of Netherlands. And it's a silver rider. It tells us the KM92 number. That, that's the standard catalog of world coins. Now, this is a 1768 dated coin, which doesn't match the coin we had exactly. Remember, we had a 1791. But this gets you close enough where you, know, you can learn a lot about this particular coin. And you know where to go to look it up. This tells you on the NGC website a lot of the specifications of the coin. And then they also have a price guide down here at the bottom so you can actually figure out what your coin is worth if you know the grade. 
here in XF, 1791 is worth $225. So that, so far we're batting two for two or still 100%. Let's see what we can find now on the next coin. The next coin is going to be a very plain three mark coin from Germany. Now, if you didn't know that Deutsches Reich meant Germany, you would have to sp spend quite a while trying to find it. But with Google Images, let's see what we find. Bam, there it is. Now, ours is a 1924 D. This is a 1925 D, but it tells us exactly what it is, or, or shows it a coin that looks identical. Uh, let's go down here to V coins and see what they have. They have a 1924A, but this also tells you the information you need to know. It's from the Weimar Republic of Germany. Uh, the Berlin Mint is A. The D is uh, uh, Munich from uh, Bavaria. It even tells you who the design was by, Dr. Or Professor Joseph Wackerly. And then it uh, tells you the, the catalog numbers that you need to identify it. So it didn't match exactly, but again, we know that we can go to the KM Standard Catalog of World Coins, or we can go to the Jaeger book, which is uh, what is known as the guidebook or red book of German coins. It's a German publication similar to our red book, but it's very easy to use. So uh, this, uh, I'm going to count this as a 100% match, even though it didn't match exactly the date. We want to we, the, the goal here is not to find an exact match, match to the date and mint mark, but the goal is to find uh, what the coin is so that we can, you know, fine tune it later on. Let's go to the next image. This is, uh, this is a very unusual coin. It's a Civil War token from 1864. There's really not much on it. The front has a rider on a horse. And the back has the legend Union Forever and the date. So if you didn't know anything about coins, where would you even know to look this up? So let's click on that and see if it finds it. And not only did it find the coin to a, to a match to it, but this is an identical match. You can see that this is the, the exact same coin and PCGS.com at one time graded this coin for me, MS65, and here it is. So this tells you that it is an 1864 token uh, under Civil War token category. It even gives you the fold number. So it's a fold 180 over 343. It's in silver, and it tells you exactly what you need to know about it. Now, does it have pricing information in here? No, and pricing information on these sort of coins is actually pretty difficult to find. Your best bet is to go to um, a site like um, Heritage, which has auction archives. And once you know what it is, you can try to do a search on the auction prices and see if there was uh, anything that sold anytime recently to give you an idea of the value. Okay, so so far we're was at five for five. That's pretty good. So Google Images is doing a very good job of finding these coins. Actually, it's four for four. This is a German pattern from Bavaria. And again, if you didn't know German, you wouldn't know where to go with this. So let's see if it can find it. Here we go. Boom, pretty quick. And here it is. There's the Bavarian two mark. There's a match. There's numerous matches here. And let's just pick the first one, fandom. This is a currency wiki. Oh, this has way more than we need. But down here, there it is. The the Carl Getz pattern coin, which is what this is. Carl Getz made this. He was trying to get a job at the Mint, and so he made some coins up on his own, trying to show them what kind of work he pr could produce. Well, it didn't ever work. He was never hired by the Mint, but he did produce some very interesting patterns and coins, and this tells you a little bit more about it. So uh, once again, Google Images comes through. Now we're five for five upload another file. This is a 1787 Connecticut copper. Now I'm thinking this one should be easy to find because this is a generic uh, draped bust of left image on the front and then the seated liberty on the back. So let's see if Google Images can find that. 
So that one uh, didn't quite work, but uh, we ended up with a bunch of British coins, Spanish coin, uh, more British. There's an American large cent, which has nothing to do with it whatsoever. Here's a French coin, Hong Kong. So Google Images dropped the ball here. So now we're we have five correct and one incorrect, so or not not conclusive. So let's see where we go with the next one. Now we're on a piece of paper money. This is a banknote on a Hungarian fund, and let's see what they come up with for that. Well, they found that, so the first one here is an exact match of the picture. Let's see what this is. Foreign currency in exchange, it values this at four cents. Okay, I see what's going on here. This is a company that changes current money for exchanges for US dollars. Now this does not mean that the Hungarian fund note has a value of four cents. It, it actually has no um, currency value. You couldn't take this and spend it in Hungary. Uh, but what this is telling you is that this company will pay you four cents for this note. And they'll probably pay four cents for any note because they're worth, uh, you know, 10 cents a piece on the retail market. So that's why that's here that why that's here. So it doesn't give you any information about the note itself. And let's see if some of these other ones do. Here's an eBay.com. Uh, doesn't show up there. And let's try Oh, here's Numista. Numista is a good site that gives you information about it. So this tells you what's on the front of the note. Kosith Lajos, a defeated monarch and Minerva's on one side and then it gives you other information here. So this was issued in 1852 and this was a, um, a note issued on America. Somewhere in America they were trying to raise funds for the Hungarians. Now let's go to something that I purchased in a collection and I had never seen it before. I had no idea what it was. I can tell I know a little bit about German coins so since I've been specializing them in them since 1988. So I was able to figure out a little bit about this coin. But let's see if we just do a uh, search on the front of the coin and see what Google comes up with here. Uh, that's no good. That's not it. They're mostly coming up with British coins, uh, Seated Liberty. What's interesting is I had actually did a search for this coin earlier today and it came up with it right away. And I'm surprised that the search actually changes over time. And I'm not sure whether that's based on the websites I've been visiting or whatever. But uh, in this case, it was unable to find the front of the coin. So let's go and take a look and see if it finds the back. That's this side. Uh, that doesn't do us any good. What's distinctive about this reverse is this coat of arms, it has three fish that are crossed in a star pattern. And what I found out earlier when I was able to find this coin was that it is a, um, what they call a Reckenfennig, or a game counter. It was kind of like a casino chip, and it was used uh, for gambling. It has no denomination. It's called a Reckenfennig, but it, uh, it was not worth a Fennig. I mean, uh, it wasn't passed as a regular Fennig currency. Uh, but it's a very interesting coin, and this is actually one of the nicest ever uh, ever seen. Uh, all, of all the maybe 15 or 20 examples that I saw earlier today, this was by far the finest, and it's original, uncirculated with mint red, and, and uh, so that's a should be a valuable coin. Valuable in the sense that it's worth a lot more than the 15 or 20 dollars that the uh, lower grade ones bring. But let's see if uh, we can find it using the full search or the full image search. Click on that, and what happens? Yeah, this is another fail. So uh, even though I found the, the coin earlier today, it was unable to find it this afternoon. So maybe it means that you just have to try, try again, maybe a different day. Uh, I did have one more coin. I told you that this was the last, but it's not. This is a uh, reverse of a uh, Siberian or a Russian five kopeck copper coin. These are really big. I've only got one side, so let's see if it can figure it out. I don't even know the date on, on this one here. I know it's from the EM Mint. 
uh, let's see, uh, here's a picture of one from the American Numismatic Association. That is a similar coin. Not exactly. This one doesn't have the mint mark on it. Let's see what else Google comes up with. Here's one, a 1785 EM. So yeah, this is exact, well, exact type of coin. So this gets us real close. We know it's a Russian five kopecks from 1785. And this is the uh, standard catalog of world coins number. That's a C for Craig, 59.3. And we know that this was issued by Catherine the Great. So this is a, um, it gets us exactly where we need to be. So I think, I think we lacked three coins that Google was unable to identify. So there are other ways to find these coins. So let's go back to the coin that I wasn't able to find just now. We know on the front it says Deo Duce. A v in Latin is usually stands for U. So Deo Duce, which means uh, God with God giving us guidance. So if I do a Deo Duce, I'm going to do D V C E since that's what it shows, and see if anything comes up. We'll look at images a different way, and yep, there it is. The very first coin comes out, and it is a Munzmeister Fennig, which means the mint master made this Fennig from 1759. There's the obverse, and there's the reverse. And there are little clues on these coins. Obviously, we found out that we could use the front of the coin to, to find it, even though we only knew two words. And the other one is, uh, there are some hints here. If you know anything about Latin or German coins, you always start reading at the top of the coin. So this is I B Hecht. I B Hecht, we know it was the mint master at the Zellerfeld mint and that's what these ZZs stand for here. All this is a, a title of who he was. It has to do with uh, Great Britain, Brunswick Lüneburg, that's what this BRLVN is for, Brunswick Lüneburg. And then it says MUNTZ, which is Munz, which is money, Meister, which is the money master. So we can find out a lot about these coins if we do a Google image search. Hopefully we'll find it there. And if we can't, then we can use hints on the coins themselves to find uh, the coins another way. So the final result is we had uh, 10 coins. And of those 10, we were able to find seven with no problem. Uh, three of them didn't show up at all, but we kind of know what they are. So, you know, uh, we'll be able to find them eventually uh, using a text search or some uh, a, another way to find them. Um, you can do, do auction searches, that sort of thing. So anyway, Google Images has proven to be a very good resource for identifying coins that we know absolutely nothing about. So I encourage you to try it out for yourself. Find some good quality images. The better the quality of the image that you have, the better that Google is going to be able to match it up. So try to get a good image and play around with it and see what you come up with. And leave a few comments uh, below if you have any success or failures, uh, if you have any questions about this process. And thank you all for uh, viewing the video, for coming along. And I hope that if you like videos like this, you will subscribe to the channel and definitely hit the notification bell so that when I do post a new video, it will let you know so that you can uh, view it right away. So again, thank you for visiting, and we'll see you on the next one.